Alright guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the Mad God Bard <laughs> subclass from Velda's Spire of Everything. So, if you're new to the channel or the subclass series, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy based on how the abilities gained in the subclass improve on the base class abilities. That's correct. Also, make sure you like Comment and subscribe. Yes. We entered in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Lots we'll of giveaway free stuff. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Ah. Make sure you check out their animated spell cards. With looping yeah. animations on there. They're they're thick, thick, waterproof. And again, like my favorite thing about them is like if you physically use them, like you could just slap that sucker down on the table with force and just feel the impact of that thing hit the table, and the card's not going to mess up. <laughs> it's, it's very durable, so, and they're gorgeous. Worth checking out. High quality from them, as always, guys. Do us a favor. Check out the link down below. Mm -hmm. Take a minute of your time. Help us out. Really appreciate it. But all that out of the way, Alex, Mad God Bard, what do we get in this subclass? Well, we're going to have a little fun. Stuff's going to get weird in a hurry. <laughs> Because we get bonus proficiencies as a bard. Uh, you gain proficiency in one skill, which is selected for you by your DM. Okay? <laughs> Whenever you finish a long rest, your DM can change this selection. Okay? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, also at level three, we have cacophony, which is just a fun word to say. The discordant sounds of your instrument can drive others to tears and utter madness. Once on each of your turns, when a creature fails an intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throw against one of your bard spells or features, while you are holding an instrument, you can play, I can spend one use of your bardic inspiration to play a cacophonous noise. A deafened creature is immune to this effect. Choose one of the following effects. The creature takes psychic damage equal to a roll of your bardic inspiration die. The creature is deafened and can't speak until the end of its next turn a.k.a. casters. Um, creature moves up to 10 feet in a direction you choose. This movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Which is normal. Yes. I think a lot of people forced, oversee... Like forced movement right. does not create opportunity attacks. A lot of people, that's something a lot of people forget about a lot of times. Yeah. Also, at level 6, we get Frenzied Strings. As an action, you can play a mind-infecting tune for a creature within 60 feet that can hear you. Creature must make a Wisdom Saving Throw or be Frenzied for up to one minute. Creature can repeat the saving throw whenever it takes damage, ending the effect on itself on success. Note that it can only repeat it when it's taking damage. Yes. So if it fails, it's going to be going wild for a bit. A frenzied creature loses the ability to distinguish between friend and foe regarding all creatures it can see as enemies. While frenzied, the creature chooses the target for its attacks, spells, and abilities randomly from among the creatures it can see within range, and it must make an opportunity attack if any creature provokes one. Once you use this ability, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. So, well, yeah, they'll have some shenanigan possibilities. Yeah, we'll get into it in a minute. And finally, we have Mad Melody. Being at 14th level, you can use your action to begin playing the Accursed Melody, which haunts your dreams. On each of your subsequent turns, you can use your action to continue the melody. Only creatures you choose, well, that's very important, yes. within 60 feet Absolutely. of you can hear the melody. All other creatures hear as a discordant noise. Even deafened creatures can hear the haunting melody, which is very important since you can deafen somebody with your other ability. You want this to be able to affect them as well. When you use your action to play the melody, a creature that can hear the melody must make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC. On a failed save, it takes psychic damage and suffers an additional effect based on the number of consecutive turns you've been playing the melody as shown on the table below. After four consecutive rounds or no creature hears the melody, for one round, the melody begins again at the first round. Yes. So if you notice, it does not say, like, uses on this. Correct. Because you can just do it. That is right. Yeah, so that's important to keep in mind here. <laughs> uh, for the first round, it does 4d8 psychic damage, and the target is deafened. The second round, it's 7d8 psychic damage. The target can't speak and has disadvantage on ability checks. Oof. Third round is 4d8 psychic damage. The target is charmed by you until the end of its turn. And the fourth round is just 9d8 psychic damage. All right. So it's just a cycling, like, roller coaster kind of wave of less damage, more damage. Less damage, more damage, plus an effect on three of those four turns. Yes. Definitely some interesting possibilities with that one. Yep. All of that being said, we'll move on, now that the abilities are finished, into the rating portion of the video. Yep. First up is the role play value, asterisk, as always. Talking about role play, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, 
basically things outside of the initiative order. That's right. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass and how they might improve your potential in those role play scenarios. So, looking at the abilities for the Mad God Bard, there are some interesting options on here. Uh-huh. Uh, the DM being able to switch your bonus proficiency is very interesting. Yep. My biggest concern slash critique of that is being a bard, you already have jack of all trades. Yep. So just getting extra bonus proficiencies isn't as impactful as it would be for other classes to just straight this up shoot them. So it it's not as good as getting something like an expertise, for example, which yep. would be significantly better, um, in my opinion. But the thing that could be interesting is if you work with a DM or if your DM is really interested in uh, foreshadowing or stuff, you could maybe switch your proficiencies into something that could become useful yep. in that specific day, depending on your circumstances. Mm-hmm. So with your DM's discretion, it could be a very interesting ability. Uh, but that would be more interesting, I think, for the DM <laughs> than maybe for you. Yes. So it is what it is. Because then you start like overthinking everything that comes through. It's like, what, 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 is, what, what does that mean? What do we do with this? Like, what information? Like, what, what, uh, and it could be absolutely nothing. You can also just mess with people. You can also mess with people. Yeah. Just give so. them animal handling when you and just don't, don't, don't let them run into any animals that yep. day. Just because. But uh, yeah, so there is that. Cacophony. Cacophony, cacophony. Uh, has RP uses for sure. Which yes. is the forced movement could make people move out of the way. Uh, or... I mean, you could do some shenanigans just for sure. Just walk into a wall. Right. Like, <laughs> like just to look. If, if you're doing like a charm person or something, mm-hmm. you know, like you have lots of spells that can have an impact or you just, I, I don't know, bards have lots of utility spells. Yes, so they do. There's a lot of options you could do mm-hmm. to, to make some shenanigans happen. Um, I, mean, I imagine like the deafen and speak thing, like if you're yes. trying to gather information so you think somebody's maybe spying on you, exactly. you could cast any spell on them. That right. caused him to fail. If they fail the saving throw, you're like, okay, he can't hear or talk for the next, you know, for the next six seconds. So you can say something kind of important, and then right. So on? yeah, you can you can. There's some potential there for the most part. Absolutely. And then lastly, there's the frenzy, which could have some chaos for mm-hmm. role play as well, where you just could frenzy a guard or something. Yep. Just as, as a distraction. distraction. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you could have some in that. And it lasts until they take damage. So if mm. no one wants to hurt the person, like, say you frenzy, like, a diplomat or something. Yeah. No one wants to hurt that person, yeah, you just, know? Yeah, just so, tackle them on the ground. Right. So <laughs> they just keep freaking out. And it, it can be a good distraction for, yep. you know, getting some shenanigans and stuff as well. But uh, there are some limitations on those, whereas the frenzy is once a day. Yep. And then the cacophony uses a spell slot and a bardic inspiration. Yep. So I mean, there's the one that comes to on that. is uh, vicious mockery does damage, but it's like so little damage, like just give somebody a headache, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean? If they fail that saving throw on the mockery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some use. It's like, uh, but gray area. All, all that being said, it's kind of on the niche side yep. and limited as well because yep. it's dipping into your your resources for the day yes. with your break inspiration and yep. break inspiration. You get back control rest. Eventually. Eventually, but so spell slots. But spell slots, not so much. Yep. And then once a day for frenzy, eh, it is what it is. Yep. So we just gave it a two and a half in the role play department. Yep. Just it has some options, but nothing that's really gonna be there, really crazy. There, it's a combination of niche use. There's ways to get around it quickly. Like the frenzy may last for one turn because he took somebody took damage in the RP right. setting or whatever else. So there's the reliability of it yes and along with the the combination of the GM maybe changing that proficiency right every day <laughs> it's just like oh yeah. you can't you can't plan on it right you can't plan around having it or the certain skill proficiency on the combat side of things again I mentioned the whole weird and interesting thing because that's what this whole thing is uh, the cacophony thing obviously if somebody fails saving throws again you're attacking Intelligence and Charisma are the two best saves to attack. So when there are definitely yeah. some bard spells out there with Charisma, you can throw some extra damage out there, force them to move away from you, essentially, if it's a disengage. Right. You know, essentially can work that way. Uh, and then the deaf and speak, if you have an enemy caster, and yep. they fell a saving throw yep. against you, you can take away their ability to speak, so therefore they can't do the verbal components of yes, spells. And there's a <laughs> the vast majority. extremely high percentage of 
spells. Like I know one of you is going to going to tell me what that percentage is. But it's <laughs> got to be ninety percent plus. It, it's a lot. It's not higher components. That you know, I mean, it's probably comfortably above ninety percent that require verbal. The somatic and materials is where it kind of changes yep. up. But like ver- verbal is almost required for all of them. So that's what makes that really good for combat side of things. Being able to frenzy something works until it takes damage. Yeah, it's only, it is only once per short or long rest. But, again, go back to the action economy thing. Right. If you make somebody spend their entire turn, it's not like you just stunned them or paralyzed them like with a whole person. Right. You made them spend their turn hitting one of their friends. Exactly. Because you're not going to do this when it's near one of your friends. Yes. You're going to do it like when the, the mage is standing next to the archer that you're fighting. And you're like, right. hey, hey, archer, you, that, that guy called you a nasty name like three hours ago, didn't he? So he turned right. slapped the mage. And if ideally he breaks concentration to concentration spell, yeah. oh, that would be so amazing. Yeah, you <laughs> some again. Yeah. And then finally the mad melody thing. Definitely the pinpoint of what this does in combat is yep. this because it does not take any spell slots. Right. There is no limit on the use. The only drawback to this is it does take your action every turn to do. Right. But if you don't have like a, a spell you really want to cast, yep. you just do this. And it's AoE damage. Because yeah, if you're yeah, within range. If you're range of range stuff. Now granted, you're probably not gonna do this consistently if there's just fighting one thing i wouldn't think maybe you could if it's you to be fair you don't have the best options for offensive cantrips as a bard sure. so it gives you a nice alternative it, 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 gives, it gives you a way to do damage consistently yeah. every, every turn without having to spend spell slots and doing more damage at least on cycle than a cantrip does plus the extra effect so right it's it, it's definitely not a bad choice to do it's like if you're not sure it's, eh, it's, right. it's reliable it's reliable damage of one of the two best damage types in the game along with force. Right. That being said, and covering all that, we gave it a three and a half out of yes. a possible five because there are some interesting options. The question is going to be is again the limit of use and being able to trigger them reliable because you're having to play off somebody failing a save right. or the frenzies only once per short or long rest till they take damage, that kind of thing. So there are some limitations, but there's definitely some interesting options that, that stand out as unique compared yeah. to what other things may have. And I think one thing, too, is uh, having both of those abilities, like your Capstone and the Frenzy, both rely on a Wisdom save, mm-hmm. is hurts it a little bit just because Wisdom is... It's an it's like a middle save. It's not the worst yeah. save. It's not the best save. It's just... It's, it's not, not gonna con. Be, right. Like, <laughs> it's probably like con is the worst, and then like strength like, or dex. Yeah, and, and then wisdom. And then wisdom's probably the next one after yeah. that, so... And then, like, oh, obviously, intelligence is the best save. Like, if you can target intelligence, it's going to yeah. be very yeah, impactful I mean, it, most it's, of the time. Charisma, it's, charisma's right up above it, that, though. In, yeah, in, intelligence, charisma, wisdom, and then, like, dex, strength. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that does scale as well as you get higher yes, level as well. Obviously, yeah, because attacking for the con at level 3 is fine, but it's the 17, 18, you're like, why yeah, bother? You're going to have proficiency. So, yeah, that does hurt a little bit, I think. But all that being said, synergy... Looking at the synergy on here, you do have some nice extra bonuses for the Bark Inspiration mm-hmm. with the Cacophony and the spells, which synergizes with both of those, which is yep. interesting. Uh, the random proficiency is is really iffy, and like I said, it's almost a little awkward yep. um, just because it can shift around on a regular basis, yep. and, and you it, already have Jack of All Trades, yeah. so you're not really getting that big of a bump to it from just not having a proficiency at all, so it, it, it is what it is. Uh, the Frenzy Strings gives some extra CC option utility without a spell slot. Uh, though, again, it is a Wisdom save, which it can be hit or miss, but when it does hit, it will be nice. Yeah. And they do have to take damage to break it versus just getting a chance every turn. So that is a little bit better, typically, yeah. because if you have allies of enemies, they're probably not going to... Their first instinct is not going to be to damage their friend. It's going to be trying to, like, shake them out of it or whatever. That's correct. So you might get a couple turns for free before they realize something like that. Yep. Uh... And then Capstone is nice alternative option to yep. not using a spell slot or cantrip where, like I said, you don't really have the best options for cantrips and this, as a bard offensively. And this does give you multiple targets with right. that and where cantrips only hit one thing. Exactly. And it also has you, some utility on it as well for some bonus effects. So mm-hmm. that is nice. Uh, all that being said, it's it's okay yeah. <laughs> in our opinion. We gave it yeah. a 3 out of 5. There's some nice options but nothing that's really crazy. Yep. Uh, again, on here, you have... Some abilities tied to Bark Inspiration and your spell slots. You're using having to use two resources to get access to it. Yep. And then you also have the proficiency thing is pretty much irrelevant. <laughs> a yeah. lot of times yeah. it's going to be re- irrelevant because yep. you can't count on it. And then the frenzy thing is nice, but it's once a rest. And capstone is a nice ability, uh, but it is 
taking your action. Yeah. And it is something that focuses on wisdom, which is... Yes. It's okay. It's, it's, it's fine. fine. It's just nothing you really right. want to... And it's all or nothing as well. It's another that's, thing I want to point out. That's really the thing that... I, I would have given this this thing a, an extra half up, probably in the combat and the synergy, if, it was if like, that was half if it was damage. Like half on, damage and you don't take it the effect instead yeah. of... Yeah. Instead of all or nothing. Yeah. So it is what it is. It's it's a very interesting subclass, dealing with some stuff that's a little bit more unique, I would say, getting some extra bonus utility effects on top of AOE targeting kind of things. Yep. It's interesting. Uh, but that's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so when our new videos are coming out. Yep. Check out our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Always appreciate stuff coming from them. Yep. Great stuff. Check them out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.